So he ain't making no promises, but he gonna give me a good buff job on it. I'm gonna try to close the top. See that message right there? Only manual operation of top pop. Was part of my problem. This definitely is a problem, but I wouldn't have thought that it wouldn't allow it to go up and down. But this piece here is um, broken. YouTube, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today's vlog, I'm not even gonna open the garage door, so be mindful of the light. I don't want all the bugs flying in here and everywhere back in the yard. See the skirts turned out good, but today's vlog is something that's going on with my top. Um, it's not locking in place, as you can see. I can just lift that straight up. And to get this weird air message, which I'm about to show you right now. When I try to let the top up or down. I broke out my ratchet. As we all know, it's a little spot up here. On the top, that little square. You pop that cover off and you can use this to unlock it. This is a six millimeter six millimeters so I can stick it up in there and I can twist it and to take the uh, be able to unlatch unlatch this and to make sure that it is latched which right now it is latched I press the start button it wants me to try to start it So I'm gonna start it up. Alright, I'm gonna try to close the top. See that message right there? Only manual operation of top possible. that when I press the button to try to let the top back which means I got to do it manually now the tripped out part about the manual aspect of it is you got to take the seats out and um, I'm gonna get back when I get in the back seat all right now you saw the issue I was having the crazy part of this is you cannot get in your trunk if you have a convertible without that. So, I have to squeeze it into my car. Sorry about the camera, give me a minute. You gotta move the back seat forward, which is just these click, the two little cheap ass tabs that go in here that had already broke on me twice. Then you take the key out of the key fab, stick it in here. It's supposed, to, if, you got your, if you bought your car new, it comes with an extender. You bought your car new, it comes with an extender. Mines did not come with have an ex did not have the key extender they call it. So I just used the socket. A regular old what size socket is this? Let's see if we can see the size. What that say 15 millimeter or 14 millimeter? Stick it over the key because the key is extremely hard to turn, so you're gonna need that leverage. And then twist it and you'll hear it thump indicating that the trunk is popped. Now that the trunk is popped, we 
which I already popped the trunk. Like I said, other than that, you have no way of getting in here. I also tested it too on my door lock. And this is just in case you ever lose. If you, if you have no power to your car and you have a Camaro or these style cars where it's just basically push button, you have to pull this latch open. It's a little hole underneath there. I'm gonna show you on here. So you can see that. See that little space right there? You stick the key in that space, but you're trying to get this to pop. This piece right here, you're trying to get that to pop. Of course it will fall on the ground and underneath the car. One of them things. But you would basically stick the key in there, lift it up, you would hear it pop out, and then you would just take it and slide it back, and it comes right out. I did that just to make sure that this is even a key to unlock, because it should unlock your glove box. This should be how you can unlock your door so you can get in your car and to pop your trunk manually. Now with my trunk pop manually, I need to access that side of the trunk with the, um, where the battery is at, because from all of my reading and studies and stuff, the convertible top sensor, sensor uh, is down there on that side by the battery. So we're going to go over there and I'm going to look into it, get all my lights set up so that we'll be able to see it in a minute. Alright, now that I was able to get inside of my trunk, I put a rag to cover the little trunk hole up. And I had to manually lift this part up, so it was already loose. Lift that up and hold it up. It may take two people to do it. But you lift this up, hold it up, grab the tail, this, uh, the, the lid, flip this back into this position so that it's locked in. Now I can loosen it, that boat up from the front, and I can flip my top all the way back down in here, which will be a big help so that way I can possibly potentially see what in the heck is going on with it. What did I do with my flashlights? Here it is. Just to give some light to what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna let the seat back now. So that way I can actually get in here. Show you the whole process on how to, I didn't let it back all the way, get in here now, now I can access this with my socket, um, angle the light a different way so we can see, now I can access this with my socket, Turning it to the right, locks it in place. Turn my ratchet to the left so that I can unscrew it. You hear it turning. You turn it all the way to the left until it stops. And then it's completely released from this latch. And as you can see, I can push it up. Now from the outside, I'm probably not going to be able to do this while holding the camera, but let's give it a try. Now that it's loose, I can manually flip it down. As you can see, so it slips all the way inside the trunk. All right? So now, Now I can see everything and I can access everything. Also good thing to note that I didn't do was to roll the windows down. It, it definitely helps. Well, when letting it up and down, it helps so it don't put any pressure on the windows. I didn't do that, I forgot, it just reminded me because the windows go up and down anyways, right? So now, this lid I know is damaged. 
this may have something to do with it, with the issue that I'm having with it closing and opening all the way. But since it's all the way down, the card technically should read that it is all the way down. You see, I still got my back seat for it. The card should read that it's all the way down. But what I want to see is if it's a sensor down in here, that, and this, because this is messed up, I'm going to go ahead and take that out until I'm ready to replace it. Um, and I'm going to see, because I think I ordered it last time, or I may have got it from the dealer, but I'm going to try to order it and see if it's a sensor that reads something inside of here, because I think it is, and that may be what's causing my problem. Because if this damage and you keep letting it go up and down, it may end up damaging a sensor or something like that. I checked the piece of the, because I do have a stereo system in my trunk. And um, you take the wires, the plug, and you tape it to a magnet, stick it to a surface. That's been working perfectly fine. You can see the speakers down there. So I haven't had any issues with that. So I don't think that wire or sensor or any of that stuff is an issue. Because this is a new issue and I wasn't having this issue until I started having this problem. So it's all the way down in there. It's damn sure heavy. Theoretically, I could flip this lid all the way back down too. My garage light just went out. There we go. Sorry about that. So we're going to move on to the next step and see, get my flashlight so I can look down in there and see if I see a sensor in a minute. All right, now for an update. I went on ahead and took this cover piece off. Like I showed in the video, I, I was believing that that might be most likely part of my problem, which is this piece. You see it just got clipped, so it kind of pop in place and pop out. But this, this door cover right here is damaged. So this is what I'm thinking was part of my problem. This definitely is a problem, but I wouldn't have thought that it wouldn't allow it to go up and down. But this piece here is um, broken. It shouldn't be bent upward, inward like that. So what I'm thinking it was doing was getting interference for a sensor. And yes, it is a sensor in here. Um, right there, we try to angle my light better so you can see that. See that right there? So that's a sensor. And it's another sensor on the inside. I'm gonna grab my smaller light. See those two sensors? Let me zoom in so you can see it better. But those two sensors there, see them? It's one and two. And they both read, I'm assuming they read when it's all the way open and when it's all the way closed, but they have to read it. And then it's a part right here, that little, little piece right there, that little piece right there, um, right there, right where my finger is at. You can see it better when I put the light on it. That little piece, you can see from the inside that that's probably what reads open and close. Because I was having the issue before I had this issue where every now and then intermittently it would say that it is open or top not secure when it was secure. Now it is a sensor on the other side but it's only one and I don't have that little insert right there on the other side. Now I'm not sure if that insert fell out, if it's supposed to be there or not. Honestly I'm not 100% sure. But now that I've got that part of it done, I'm going to see if I can let my top all the way forward and allow it to just lock in place until I'm ready to replace this piece. And that will let me know if that was the issue. And then, you know, I can go to a dealership or look online, figure out where I tailed on the inside and I never did it. So it's finally going to happen because it is super filthy on the inside especially if you got a convertible top it get real dusty see the back it really ain't much to see in the back stuff all down in there all in the cracks you see 
the dash, this stuff is always dirty. My, my floor is pretty, usually pretty good. I don't do a lot of eating in my car. That's how it looks on the outside, I mean on the inside. This how it looks on the outside. It's real hard to see, but I got a gang of scratches there. You can kind of see them. So, you ain't making sorry, as y'all Camaro owners know. The rims, really easy, gets dirty. That splitter's still looking good. The front, get a lot of rock chips and bugs all over right there. Bugs all over here too, so we're gonna see how that turns out. step in all that mud over there on here this is peeling I'm gonna have to end up getting this fixed or repainted when I get my car painted I'm not sure if it's gonna be this year or not but I definitely plan on getting my car painted um, this dirty he gonna remove this out though I got to get that fixed too I got to show him how to do the deck lid and as you see it is filthy still growling though I've been waiting a while, had to come to him. I'm waking up late, all kind of stuff. Had a good ride here, I tell you that. So much fun driving this car, that's why I am not getting rid of it. See, I went on ahead and put this back on, even though the issue I was having, um, cause all I gotta do is close it at this point. Spending another $65 to have the same problem, I don't think I'm gonna do that. But this is pretty much the car. I know it's hard to tell, but when I get it back, it is gonna be crystal clean. Detail, polish, the whole nine. So I hope you really enjoy it. And just to put his information out here, this is his. You can scan that QR code to make an appointment if you're in the Dallas, Texas area. That's who's gonna be doing my detailing on my cars in a minute. All right, y'all ready? Look at that. Finally coming to pick the car up. Got all that brake dust off the wheels. Super clean. As far as it zoom out it's a nice morning so I'm definitely going top down that front splitter was such a great addition to the vehicle blends in perfectly with my car and that's it outside looking real good Like having a new car all over again. Look at the tips on there. Ooh, like brand new. Way it was when I first bought them. I just let the top down. Out the inside. That's what some good detailing do to you. <laughs> Took everything out, cleaned it all out. It's in great shape. All right, as you can see, I was able to get my top back closed. I went on ahead and opened the garage door for this part. Very, very tricky. Um, like I said, what I end up having to do, what I ended up having to do is, um, I showed in a video manually taking that back, lifting the top upward, flipping the lid back, going through the same functionality as it does when, I went through the same functionality as it does when it's um, letting back. I unscrewed it from the front. I folded it all the way back into the trunk. I still was having that same problem. I, I showed kind of 
where it was two sensors on the driver's side inside of that flat uh, piece that covers the little with the little slide door. I mean, I'm gonna have to replace that. What I believe is that by crumbling up, it was blocking that sensor every now and then, keeping. That's why I kept getting the top not secure for. So I have to replace that. But that was my initial issue. Some people have an issue where the yellow and brown wires inside the trunk don't make good contact. Um, I took that apart. Like I said, I got a stereo system in here. All you have to do is tape a magnet to that sensor and stick the magnet to the metal uh, to make your top go back in, to make your top go back even with a stereo system in there without having that flap that's supposed to be up. So I, um, oh, it's bugs, man. So I did that. And I still was getting that same fault where I couldn't manually, even though everything was down like it was regular to top down, it wouldn't go back up. So what I ended up having to do was go inside of my trunk and disconnect the positive side of the battery for not long, for like two minutes. Then I reconnected the positive battery. Um, I didn't fully start the car. I just pressed the button and I hit the top. It still said top not secure fault. So I had to let it back first so that it can read that top was all the way back. And then, ooh, freaking bug. Then I moved the top back forward and it moved forward and locked in place. Now I'm gonna leave it like this until I can replace uh, the rest of those, that, that piece that I need, which pretty much mean, I can't let my top down, but it's gonna have this big opening on the side of my car. Now these mosquitoes is getting to me. So I'm heading the garage some. I'm gonna go ahead and power down my car. Um, well, I'm gonna fact I'm gonna close the garage door first and then I'm gonna power down my car. But that's the end of the video. Like I said, this piece right here, was my whole problem. Pieces that got broken on here, you see this is bent up. So that tab, really I could take this out, put it back in place until I'm ready to replace it because it just snapped in place. And I can still use my top, it just won't have that door. But this was my issue as to why I had top not secure for. Um, but like I said, it's two sensors. It's also a sensor on the passenger side when it's up, but I don't think that sensor it's all, I'm sorry, it's also a sense reading that it's all the way forward, one reading that it's all the way back, which kind of suck because at some point those are going to go bad, right? And those will have to get replaced and they look like a, a nice job to replace that. So that does kind of suck. And they got a little piece inside the hole that reads when it's all the way forward and it's all the way back. And that's what reads where your top position is at. So I hope this video was able to help people that have a similar problem. Um, I will give an update on one of my future vlogs once I buy this piece and install the new part, um, which I'm going to look up now and try to order it. Uh, and I'm, I add that to one of my other videos just so people can know. But my problem is solved for now and I can drive my vehicle. So thanks for watching the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up in a minute.